So take car sex elva age no near. And I'm sorry when I get language cows in my head because I have now again to mix Swedish and English, which is not very easy for me. What's this? So this is the local mirror of ISO GTC 1 SC22, subcommittee 22. Um, and I talk now shortly about standards. And Standards might not very excite, be very exciting for everyone. Of course, C++ standard is. But with C++, often you work in industry where you have to apply standards. Who, who has to work with standards? Yeah, mostly of us, right? So standards are everywhere. This is a screenshot from a, a video from, from CIS. CIS is the Swedish Institute of Standards. They have on their... On their uh, YouTube channel, and they show just where standards are. There's a drone is flying around, and you have uh, labels everywhere where you can find the standards, and they are literally everywhere. So from the moment of birth, and feeding us, and we are surrounded by standards. And if you see it from this perspective, it might become a little bit interesting. They're still boring to read, sometimes hard to apply in code. But they have the point, and it's not easy to find consensus on the international level. ISO standards help doing this. So, but let's focus a little bit on C++. You might know that C++ is an ISO standard. And what does this mean? It means basically the outcome of uh, the C++ standardization is a PDF. And compiler vendor can take this PDF and implement their compilers and the standard library to be standard conform. And on this PDF, we have this nice name here. ISO GTC1 SC22 WG21. Subcommittee 22, Working Group 21. So we will break this down a little bit, what this means, because it's a long name and no one wants to say it. So GTC1, they have a description, I will not read it. But it's basically about uh, information technology. And I have borrowed this uh, picture from SIS because I think it explains it better. We, have the, we don't care about uh, telecom standards. We have what I would say hardware. This is electronic and, and electricity. I call it hardware and everything else. And GTC1 is bridging this. And you see on this picture also the, the international um, names. Then European, and then the Swedish department within this. Now let's look at the sub subcommittee 22. It's about programming languages, their environments, and system software interfaces. And it has all these cool, modern, hipster programming languages included. <laughs> and you might see there is maybe a historical reason why these languages are here and others have other ways, because these languages date back much longer. But it's still an um, OK way to define a language and to find a consensus that works not just for one compiler vendor, like Sun or, who, who, or Microsoft or whatever, but for multiple ones. So WG. 21 is the C++ working group. And this the Cos X Elva AG Nolnir Arbeitsgruppen is the local mirror, the Swedish local mirror of subcommittee 22. So how it works to, to have a, a voice in the standardization process is you need to have a local mirror of the subcommittee. This is now the Arbeitsgruppe Nonier. Within this, there will be expert groups, and the expert groups mirrors then the uh, working group. So we have an expert group for C++, which then mirrors uh, WG21, the C++ standardization group. And then we, we get a lot of ISO papers, which we read, and we can vote for it. And usually you say yes, because if you say no, this means you don't want to have standards, to quote Avid. <laughs> 
because for C++, the standardization process happens not really within, within the ISO like other things. We, we know there are the standard meetings and the mailing lists and a lot of work happens there. And then also the voting happens there and then the voting goes to the ISO. And then it makes, becomes official. But we get all the, all the papers and we can we discuss from time to time about them. This is also a graphical presentation how this uh, looks um, in the context. We have the TICA, the working group, and then the expert groups, which there was this one. Okay, so we mirror this now, this exists. Um, I'm very happy we kickstarted this last year. We have already some members and since last year we have also meetings every four to six weeks. And we will see how this goes on. And participating, how, how could you participate in the standardization if you're interested or want? So first of all, this works of course via this Swedish Institute of Standard. As I explained, you need to be part of the local mirror. Um, and there, you need to join TICA 611. And this is a team effort because it's, it's for a company to join. It's not for individual as a private person. So companies need to join. And then you usually talk with two people in the company, with the management and with the individual who has the technical knowledge and want to participate. So, and sometimes it's hard to address both parties, but I think it's possible. When you talk to your manager and say, hey, I would like to participate, and the manager says usually, why, right? <laughs> and then, what does it cost? And how much time will it take? Because we need to deliver yesterday, right? This is the usual in the business. So let's, let's break this down. So the, the why is you show commitment, not just as a person, but also as a, as a company, right? A company that participates do a little bit more than other companies. Then it's up to the companies to label them as something. They can do, some do. It's a good place to stay informed. May, maybe not so for the C++, but for everything else. We will see a few examples later. But you're in the first row where you get the papers in. <laughs> and then you meet also others. So it's also a nice place to come in touch and, and community, basically. And networking is also very interesting, maybe, for companies. Um, as said, you would join Ticker 6, so companies join Ticker 6 11, and this is more than just the software. So these are all the Arbeitsgruppe within this, this, this uh, group, and you see art, um, artificial intelligence, cloud computing, uh, big data is there. I find the number seven very interesting. This alone has about 20 subgroups. So it's not just about C++ and C standardization, even if this is what for us maybe is the most interesting stuff. But companies would join there, and when they are there, then they send the experts to the subgroups which exist. And you can look it up on the, on the CIS homepage, just Google for TK611, and you will find all the information. And for joining the, the, the C++ working group, so why would you want to do this? And I, I gave you here the quote from Detlef Vollmann, who is the mailing list administrator from OpenSDT.org, if you know this place where a lot of things happen. There are some public mailing groups that you can just read, but there are also the closed mailing groups where you can only join if you are in the, in the local uh, expert groups. Otherwise, there are currently the rules that you cannot join. So if you want to be involved in the discussion on this mailing list, then you need to be in the, in the, in the Swedish mirror. Hmm? What does it cost? Okay, this is a, uh, I cannot answer you this question, only this can, because very likely your company, if you work with standards, and when I asked, many people do, your company might be already be a member of this. But another department might know. So your manager maybe not, but maybe another department knows where they get the papers from. And so you need to contact this, but the pricing is not terrible bad if, you, if you're not there and, and want to, to join the first time. If you're just interested in, in, in C++ and nothing else, 
we have a little bit, um, we are in a trial phase to find out how to, how to translate by Erimlik. <laughs> um, what is what is appropriate for the people to join because we have a lot of individuals who are interested to, that are not big companies. They have of course a, a different financial uh, possibilities and we want to be inclusive as possible and not have financial barriers to participate participate in the C++ standardization. We will see how this works out. We will continue now until summer at the very minimum with the current model then re-evaluate and, and move on like this. Okay, how much time does it take? As much time as you want to invest, right? No one tells you you have to be at the meetings or whatever, so it's up to the individuals on, from, from the companies how much time do they want to invest. If you want to be active and participate in standardization, not just the language, language C++ language specification, others, it's a little bit more. If you just want to monitor and mirror, then it's to which meetings you go. A lot of the meetings are virtual these days, so you don't need to go to, to another place, so that's nice. And for the C++ group, we currently have uh, four to six weeks. And other, we have also on our Slack channel, uh, channel where we can discuss details if this wanted. So it's not that much what we do currently. So participation is possible. Um, instead of showing commitment, stay informed for meeting others. If you need the argument, bring your experts to the expert groups. Um, I hope to see uh, some more people in AG uh, As you have seen, there are also other languages, C and security and vulnerabilities. This is also a very interesting group. So if you're in automotive, medical devices or so, this might be interesting for you. And if you know someone from banks, there is also COBOL standardization, still exists. I had the suggestion for a next standard recently in my inbox. So I know banks cry, oh, we need COBOL developer, please show a little bit commitment, <laughs> join the groups and, and, and show that you're active. So if you're in a bank, please tell this the COBOL developer that they have a chance here to be a little bit more visible. Um, if you need any help with a company, so let me know or to whom to contact at this, I can also help you there to set up the connections. If you are there, you will get this nice badge, which is, this is my one, and I'm, thanks for listening. I hope it was not too boring to talk about standards, but if you have any questions, then please uh, ask me. Everything clear? Awesome, yeah. So for the C++ group, yeah, the, what, yeah. what, what we did so until now was basically setting up the stuff, the, the, the procedure. And when you, what, what we're currently doing is trying to create a help framework. For example, if you want to write a standard paper, there are templates available. There is how do you write it, how to frame such things. So we, we, we try to get a, a helping pass for this. Then a very concrete task is we have a, a member from, from Lund um, and he has already made some standard proposals but not finished any one of this. So the next time we will look over his ideas and discuss them. So these are things you don't have access because this currently exists just on, on his computer. And then we will see what we do the next stuff, right? We can also discuss the, the papers we get in. Hey, I have a question because from time to time papers come in. And then you have two months to say yes, no, or I have, don't have an opinion from the voting. And all these votes become accumulated. So you, we can, of course, discuss this off, offline, but we can also, in this every six weeks meetings, hey, there is this paper which is a little bit confusing. What shall we do with this, right? Or does anyone know what this is? It's mostly my question, <laughs> and then now it explains me, <laughs> or someone else. So, yeah, so this is what we do. Anything else?